I'm Sir Flobogen Thunderhammer. And I'm Teflon Frosthammer. And I'm Cabbage Tidehammer. And none of those dildos are going to be here. Hi, this is Barony Vidalia. This is uh, Lord Quan Quarrel. And this is WAP. That's women, amp guard, and people. If amp guard knighthood means anything, you can't knife a motherfucker and keep it. And the thing that people need to understand centrally about arts and sciences events is that your scores don't matter. Do you want a black phoenix or a white phoenix? Jeez, language, man. We're on a freaking podcast, for fuck's sake. Mind-blowing experience. Hi, with us tonight we have Lady Lightning from the Iron Mountains, who does a lot of the research and data analysis for the Circle of Monarchs. Say hi, Lady Lightning. Hi, hello. (laughs) How's it going? Doing great. Glad to have you here with us tonight. Yeah, it's wonderful to have you here. So typically we open up with a question about how you got into Amtgard. So you want to regale us with that story? Yeah, sure. I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, so how I got into Amtgard, I was in college and I wanted something different to do. <laughs> and a classmate said, hey, have you tried this game that I play on Saturdays? And I hadn't, but it was just a really fun break. It was free to play. I loved that. Mm -hmm. So I did move after that. So I spent summer in California and then I moved to Denver, but I kept finding my local groups and just meeting up with them. And it's a fun hobby, fun break. That's awesome. Yeah, that is really awesome. Um, So you've moved around a lot. What park did you start at? Um. I believe they're now defunct. I started at Grey Lantern in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Oh, okay. What kingdom is that? That is also the Iron Mountains. Okay. Well, it was. I, they changed their name and they couldn't keep numbers. And I think they finally died out last year. The guy who was doing all the work moved and mm-hmm. then they didn't stay together after that. Yeah, I hear the average lifespan of a park is typically around like four or five years or so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't remember where I heard that statistic from, but... I I feel like that was (laughs) like in the State of the Amp Guard report somewhere and somebody quoted that statistic at us, but I'm not sure if we confirmed that statistic ever. We're really good at our jobs. (laughs) (laughs) I guess we'll have to actually... Right. Um, Yeah, I don't... I don't know that then all I can say is it kind of sounds right to me, but I've not actually looked it up or done the research, so who knows? Yeah, I, I remember the uh average player lasts three years and then someone said average park is four ish. So I wonder if that's if they don't like get into a kingdom or I wonder what the qualifiers are for that. Hmm. Who knows? Sorry, I got. Yeah, I we can know. we can speculate. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about statistics, Vidalia. Um, I'm not the person to ask. Ask Lady Lightning. <laughs> Tell me about the statistics, <laughs> Lightning. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we can jump into that if you want. You um, I've I've seen your work. I actually watched the entire um, Gathering of the Crowns. This not last year or whatever it was uh the 14 hour or 12 hour youtube broadcast uh so i saw (laughs) (laughs) i just i wasn't even in a monarchy position i just did that of my own volition (laughs) masochism i I guess did you say you did it for fun or (laughs) uh so i saw your presentation live and i thought you did a really great job um covering all the different uh facts and stuff from the survey uh so can you give us a brief synopsis, maybe? Oh, sure. Yes. So that, that presentation was part of work on the awards committee. And so we are a group under the Circle of Monarchs. Mm-hmm. So there was, we've had some fluctuation, but there was a group of three or four people who've been doing the work to pull together data and statistics to answer the well, the Circle of Monarchs asked us to look at Elders of the Value, and then they also asked us to look into a second proposal on battle game nights. Mm-hmm. So that, that project is all about is just getting views of players across the game and giving the type of summary that you guys saw back in July. The goal, 
if you saw that talk, you saw we said the goal is by next July, we'll have some recommendations for them. So we're currently working towards pulling together something they can vote on because that that was just kind of a progress update being like, hey, here's what we have so far. Here's mm -hmm. the general direction. But they didn't have an up or down vote on anything. So that's what we were right. trying to work towards now. That sounds like the circle of monarchs. Yeah, so from... Uh... A complete outside perspective, my understanding of the Circle of Monarchs is that they put together these committees to go and like research and investigate things and come back with information that they can then use to like make draw conclusions and vote on, right? Yes, yeah, so so we're potentially working towards a change in the award standards. Mm -hmm. It's it's also possible that we'll bring back a recommendation not to make a change. We haven't we haven't established exactly what we're going to recommend yet so mm. that's still in progress but potentially we could see different of those after after they make a decision on that yeah so what are some of the interesting findings that you have um with your surveys so far not necessarily about battle game nights um just anything in general yeah are there any cool yeah. outliers <laughs> Give us the inside scoop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't. I can't necessarily go much past what you already heard in that talk. Ah, I but see. I can, but you, you guys know how amp code is, right? You, mm -hmm. it's very. It's it's important when you're trying to do a service project to have communication that's all agreed on before you, right? Put it out there and. Right now, we are literally, we, we have a survey out there. I don't know when this podcast will be released, but if we still have it open, we want people to take it. Mm -hmm. And we're still in the middle of looking at it and figuring out what does this all mean. Mm -hmm. I guess my I guess my favorite thing that we've already been able to publish, or well, one of the favorite things is that we put a pretty detailed demographic section in the survey, and we were able to see we got a lot of engagement, like we got a lot of people from different kingdoms, we got a lot of people who'd been in the game different amounts of time, it had different levels of awards, and mm -hmm. it, there was a ton of interest, and it was, it's really nice to see that kind of benchmark, and to look at things like gender and race as well, so that we can say, are we actually capturing a representative group of all of the different people who play here? Because if, if we only got, for example, members of the Iron Mountains to take the survey, mm -hmm. that would be right. cool, but it wouldn't represent necessarily that you guys are Winter's Edge, yes? Yes. Yes. Did I get that right? Awesome. Yes. <laughs> I almost said never winter, I'm sorry. The same difference. <laughs> Papa never winter. <laughs> yeah, so our principality split split from never winter, so I got to be there for that vote. It was historic. PJ pretended to vote no. We're pretty close. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, so that's interesting to talk about, like, bias in surveying. Um, do you think that an online survey um, gets that representation across AmpedGuard? Or do you think there's, there's maybe any, like, pockets of demographics that we might be missing? Well, I would say one big one would be if people are not on Facebook and mm -hmm. if people are not online right now, they would be missing our efforts to reach out to them mm -hmm. because I know most of the game is not meeting in post and I don't know if any of you guys' pokes are meeting, but I know right now we don't have the option of saying, please hand this out physically at a meetup or right. anything. It, it, it has to be online just by nature of who we are right now. So definitely missing people who don't engage that mm -hmm. way. Um, yeah, but there's not much you can do to mitigate that, especially during a global pandemic. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and I guess that there's not really any way to figure out who you could be missing when you're already missing them. Yeah. Um, that's kind of a hard uh, figure. Bias to, in statistics to, is... To get... <laughs> when you're doing a, a survey. Yeah, bias in statistics can be pretty hard to manage. Um, I guess, can I add one thing to that I thought of while you were talking? Sure. Yes. Yeah, so we, we already made these posts for our current survey, so this is something else we had to say publicly. We were, we were getting a lot of feedback on this survey about bias. 
you're mm-hmm. having people say this survey feels biased to me and we wanted to address that because we are we think we're getting that feedback because there's a lot of questions about details of battle game knights like you're asking that you want it to fall under its own knighthood would you want it to fall under an existing knighthood mm. you're asking about possible qualifications we do open up the survey by asking would you like this to happen would you like a battle game night to exist right and after people have answered that question some of i think some of the ones who do not want it to exist i'm not sure we fully communicated that we still want to include their opinion like in the case in the case that a majority of people all agree we don't want it to exist okay that makes our job very easy we can bring a recommendation though not making a change Mm -hmm. but if the majority of people say yes we would like this to exist Mm -hmm. there's still going to be some people who didn't want it but that doesn't mean we toss out their views it we would still like to have their opinion if you get outvoted on this first thing Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we would like to ask you some other questions so we still have your views for possible other paths yeah and based on the amount of feedback we're getting I think we could have written something like that more clearly in the survey mm. because I'm not sure that that point was adequately made clear. I have taken the survey and I thought it was fine. Um, there were a few um, parts where I can see where people are coming from, uh, but like if you have a, I mean, I've taken statistics and surveying um, through college. And so if you have like a, more than surface level understanding of the way that surveying and statistics work, then it seems like a pretty unbiased um, survey to me, but that's just my layman's opinion. So, <laughs> yeah, I, oh. I haven't taken the survey yet. Sorry. Go ahead. Lighting. I was just saying, I appreciate the vote of confidence that it's still open. I would love for you to take it. I would, I can send you a link. We can put a link yeah, in our YouTube I've seen, video. I've seen the five links that are on Winter's Edge. Cause Why? Been, I, know, <laughs> I know. I've been ignoring Facebook because it's too much. It just feels so... It's, there's so I get notifications, so many notifications. I'm like, I don't want you right now. Just let me live my life. Um, and yeah. of course it's still there every time. I don't know why I still have the app on my phone. I should really only have it on my computer, but you know, I hate myself. Um, <laughs> but I was, <laughs> what I was going to say is that I haven't taken it yet, uh, but I have written a few surveys myself cause I used to do research in college. Um, so like, I feel like that might just be like a misunderstanding between people who might not know how surveys actually work and maybe it could have just been, I haven't, I haven't taken it yet. But I know that writing survey questions sucks and that sometimes they don't come out the way that you want them to. And it's really frustrating when they don't, especially when you have to then explain them to the uh, takers of the survey or your participants. Well, Um, let's let's put it in like terms that don't necessarily uh, apply to like something like a hot button issue. Right. Like, let's say we're making a survey for feast. Right. And do you want beef or do you want chicken? And if you want beef, how do you want your beef? Well, if everyone votes, we're well, having chicken. Well, Vidalia, I don't want either. <laughs> yes, you're vegetarian. <laughs> but <laughs> I am against the survey. <laughs> okay, do you want do you want tofu or do you want salad? I'm vehemently and <laughs> against the survey. <laughs> okay, so do you want tofu or do you want salad? Right. And if you want tofu, how do you want it? And if you want salad, how do you want it? Right. And if everyone votes that they want salad, but you want tofu right you still have to tell them how you want your salad because you're gonna have to eat the salad right you're just gonna have to eat the salad obviously (laughs) that's either that or like half of the kingdom dubs you go off site and go to a taco bell apparently um Mm. yeah all right we're getting off topic i'm talking about vegetables too much uh (laughs) vidalia talk about vegetables okay so for for i know all of our listeners are very well informed and spent the 12 hours at clan listening and taking notes very intently but in case they're not those kind of people do you maybe want to talk briefly about what your presentation at uh gathering of the clown crowns (laughs) (laughs) oh no now we've done it (laughs) that's what it's called now (laughs) and now you've offended all of the kids good job all Especially right. Um, 
<laughs> at at the uh, last meeting of the insane crown posse. Okay. So. <laughs> Okay, cabbage. That's what that's what uh, my fiance cabbage likes to call it. Um, gathering of the crowns. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, sure. I'll. Tr- Let's see. I've not gone back and watched it because I hate seeing myself on camera mm-hmm. or hearing myself talking. But I was looking through. The PowerPoint the other day, so I think I remember most of this. We spent the first half just walking through the demographics results and just showing that you guys okay? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. You both made a weird face. <laughs> Quan, <laughs> there was a water bottle mishap. It's fine. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so we just walked through the demographics results and did our best to compare it to what we already know about AmpCode, just to convey to the monarchs that we were getting like a good representation of people from their kingdoms and that we'd got various different genders and different races Mm -hmm. and different experience levels responding. And we took some time for that because it, as far as I can find, it may have been the first time that someone did a survey that asked people to identify their race that was kind of like an official amp to go wide survey. That may not mm-hmm. be true, but I know when I was doing the research to how do we benchmark this as this representative, I came up not finding something to right. benchmark against that I had to go with like an unofficial thing from three years ago with a hundred people, but, but it was what was available, so we used it. Mm-hmm. To, Anyway, so that was the first half, just walking through who took the survey. And then the second half was walking through people's views in general on Odos of the Barrio. And some of the things that stood out to me personally was a slide where we asked, do you think the shared path is no difficult than other paths? And we had a lot of people say, yes, they did think so. And then we asked, so do you think that their road is more prestigious than other masterhoods? And we had a lot of people say, no, we don't think it's no prestigious. I don't remember the percentages, but that mm-hmm. stood out because I have i don't know if this is said a lot in Windows Edge, but I'd heard a lot that, well, this needs to be difficult so that it can be prestigious. Yes. Uh, and getting that result of, well, it's difficult, but it's not prestigious, <laughs> doesn't stack up against that exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I feel like I mean, I can speculate as to why there's a rift, but, um, you know, I, I feel like a lot of people look up to the other knighthoods. Um, I won't say more than Sword Knight. I think everyone looks up to all knights, regardless of which path you've taken. Um, but I think a lot of people um, want to box in our game as just being about what happens on field when obviously there's this huge culture um, surrounding it with ANS, with service. Um, with leadership and clearly our game exists outside of being able to meet on a field and COVID has done a really great job of highlighting that um, so that that's my opinion as to why maybe people don't see um, Sword Knight as being more prestigious um, than the other knights just more difficult what's your take? personally Number one, the word of the day is bias. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so I think that a lot of people are going to see Sword Knight as this prestigious thing is because we're biased. When we first come into the game, the first thing that we see, the first thing that we all get attracted to are those nerds over there slinging foam. Like, that's the first thing that you see is these people in these either horrendously goofy outfits or these amazingly stunning ones, but either way, they're slinging foam. You know, that that's that's the first thing. You heard a whap and you're like, what's over there? Um, <laughs> uh-huh. We all did it. We all were like, hey, what are they doing? Um, but I think that's why we kind of see the sword belt as being prestigious because like, once we heard that there was like a knighthood to reach, that's the first one we were told about because we were all on the field fighting. And then we're all like, well, I want that one because I'm going to be the best because we're all the heroes in our own story. But wait, we're not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, what do you think, Lightning? 
Um, I have to think about whether I should answer. <laughs> Man, I don't. I don't know if I if I'm going to make Shield Knights annoyed. I've probably already annoyed them. So that's I fair. Think it's, I think. I think it's. I think that knighthood's really cool. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's more prestigious than the other knighthoods, but I think it's still very cool and exciting. I, I mean, I would love to own it someday. We'll, we'll see. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think. I don't think difficulty by itself makes something cool. I think it's really more about that that people get out of it by being there and that it's able to bring to the community. And I think fighting really can, like you said, it, it's one of the first things that attracts people. It is fun and exciting and brings people in. So I think as long as I think as long as the community stays close to that, like fun and excitement and I want to be that hero. I think that's awesome. I think if it's just only about being as difficult as possible, that's less cool. Right. Yeah. And actually, there was a... So we asked a question that was, do you think Sword Knight is attainable? Or maybe it was, do you think Real Lord is attainable? And then we broke down the answers by the real the level of the person responding. Mm -hmm. Every single level said, like, on average, they voted for the no, this is not attainable to most people. I, I think the two options was, is this attainable for, for Ant Godus as long as you work hard enough versus no, it's not really attainable. And most people voted for the no, it is not really attainable, except for the Zero Lords and Shield Knights taking the survey, who all they didn't all, many of them, a majority of them voted for the option of, sure, yeah, this is attainable if you try hard enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that seems and like, um, what is it? Speaking of bias, it's another type of I was, bias. I was where like, you're like, can we go back to the word of the day? Confirmation bias, bias yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's survivorship bias, almost. Like, Ooh, yeah. I did it. Ooh. I did yeah. all these things. I, I don't understand why you guys don't. If like, I can do it, it's it totally possible. attainable. I did it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. So I know a lot of your uh, surveys also worked with like gender demographics. Um. And this podcast is about you know lifting up non male voices. Um. So what? kind of demographics are we looking at as far as the surveying goes? Yes. Um, I, I think the the book you might be referring to is not part of the awards committee. It's something I did in 2018 before I had this service position. And that was an effort to see how gender affected moving up this award ladder, mm -hmm. the award ladder. I don't know if you've seen a graph that I made that shows the different levels and then a couple of colored bows for each level showing the decrease as you go up. Yeah, the I've I've seen the curve. Uh-huh. Yes. So so I made that looking at ilk data. That was not for the awards committee. It wasn't anything official that was asked for. It was just you know, like, hey, we have some data. It shows this. Maybe you guys should look. Right. Yeah. Um and what I found from that, so there are a couple of limitations. I mean, gender isn't binary and you can't know it from knowing someone's name. Mm -hmm. But what I had to go on was a data set that included first names. Mm -hmm. So I was able to infer, is this a masculine name versus a feminine name? Mm -hmm. so, so with that limitation said, I was able to see that um, there are men or people with masculine names if you look at all the people who own a first order of the value, about 1% of them will make it to the top of the ladder. They'll get they'll load, they'll get Sword Knight. Mm -hmm. If you look at people with feminine names, about 1% of them will get to sixth the order wow. of the value. That's that's a gap. <laughs> that's a huge gap. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. That's insane. And you guys you, you're probably familiar with the fact that Amp Goat has one um one female sword knight ever and she was mm -hmm. given she owned her belt in nineteen ninety something. Mm -hmm. Right. I forget the year, but it's been over twenty years since any kingdom 
has given a sealed belt to someone who is not a man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's and it's definitely a problem. Um uh, let's be solution oriented. Do you think that there's any fixes to that? How do we change our culture? Yeah, well, I, I should say that I'm definitely not the first person to raise this topic. Like, so House Lioness, which is a household to promoting mm-hmm. women in amp code combat, has existed since the 90s. And mm-hmm. it's been active all of those years with different people involved, of course, but just building a community, reaching out to players, that, that's something that's been ongoing. I think it's a good thing. I think I think it should definitely continue. Mm-hmm. Um, we looked, I, I looked at ILK data to see if there were a couple of common things that were pointed out that, well, well maybe women just don't play as much. Like, maybe they don't stay in the game as long, period. That's mm-hmm. actually not true. There, there's about a third of us, well, about a third who's non-male, whether that's mm-hmm. women or agender or non-binary, or, it's approximately a third. Mm-hmm. And those players stay in the game just as long. I mean, everyone, everyone drops out, like, if you bring out 20 new players, they're not all going to stay, right? Maybe two of them will stay. But, yeah. but so we're, we're not dropping out of Amped Guard altogether. And we have about the same attendance. So it's not like, oh, well, you're just not engaged. No, no, we are. Like, mm-hmm. it doesn't affect attendance. Mm-hmm. So to me, that says the solution is specifically something. Sorry, the solution specifically something to do with fighting because it's not something that the game as a whole is getting wrong. Mm-hmm. It's something that's happening along this particular ladder in this particular pursuit. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, we've talked about non-male tournaments um, before. I know uh, that a lot of um, conversation has happened on different uh, online forums about non-male tournaments. What's your opinion on it? Yeah, so my opinion has evolved over time, and I, I want to give I want to give the credit here to the people who stepped out first and said, hey, this is a thing we want to bring back. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if any of them want to be named on the podcast, but definitely was not me at first. <laughs> people stepping out and saying, hey, I would participate in something like this, mm-hmm. and other people saying, okay, this sounds like something we can at least try. So I, I know House Lioness did sponsor some, even as far back as 2003, I think. Mm-hmm. There were some photos on an old website. So so the idea has kind of been around for quite a while, but in about 2015, I don't know, I guess we went over a little, not 2015, 20. 16, 17-ish, yeah. we kind of went over a tipping point of some kind yeah. with, with enough people saying, I'm interested in attending this, I'm interested in running this, mm-hmm. I'm at least okay enough with this happening that I won't stop it. Right. Like, there, there was just a critical mass which at first I was skeptical about and then they ran some events that went really well, mm-hmm. like the, the fighters had a good time, there was a lot of community building that happened. And like I said, my views have changed. So I've entered several and I'm looking forward to entering there whenever we get back to meeting up in person. Yeah. I think it's I think it's great to have it, it, I mean, it's not a level playing field, but it's definitely a great community a community activity and it's a closer to level playing field than an entirely open tournament would be. Mm -hmm. I think my favorite idea is that we should do height classes or weight classes or something. I don't know if we'll ever do that. I think that might level the playing field, but you know, just, just saying this is for non men is it's, it's not bad. It's as long as the tournament is, you know, when they all run respectfully putting Mm -hmm. the players first. Yeah. I, 
I, I think it's really cool. And actually, the Iron Mountains, my home kingdom, has put in our Kokoa that we're going to have we're going to have an open weapon master, and then we're going to have a non mins weapon master. Nice. Just every way. That's just going to be a thing that happens now. That's cool. So I personally have never participated in a non-male tournament. Um, I might have slept through it. <laughs> the one that you could have participated in. The one that I could have participated in. But in my defense, I stayed up really late. So <laughs> With yep. me. Okay. And well. <laughs> okay. The also, scheduling's always hard to go ahead. They also, put it at nine in the morning oh. after... You know. Also, in Vidalia's defense, I sh- I should have woken her up. Um, Everyone was like, Vidalia <laughs> must already be out there, and yep. I was asleep. Yep. Did not realize <laughs> Vidalia was still in the cabin. Anyway, well, the scheduling. Mm, yeah. Go ahead. The scheduling's no. always out on them too. Mm. Did I interrupt you again? No, you did. I was just gonna tell you to go first. I was, I was, I, we were doing I, that thing in the hallway where one of us steps to the <laughs> side. And then... I'm just, yeah, yeah. because I love having a non men podcast because we're all like, oh, no, 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 I'm so sorry. No, 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 no. But, but if we had any man on here, they would be like, they would just continue and just like not even notice for, for the most part. I mean, there are, yeah, there are, of course, men who would notice, but for the most part, they just keep, they bully on. Whereas we're like, oh, no, 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 I'm so sorry. I interrupt. No, 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 I interrupted you. No, 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 no. <laughs> No, 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 no! I interrupted you. No, you Sorry, I'm rambling. Yeah, well, the scheduling on these things is tough because you don't like if you are. I have opinions about this. I'm sorry, but if Absolutely. you are scheduling, if you're scheduling a non mens tournament, do not schedule it at the same time as the open tournament because you want you want to plan. You want to assume that everyone might want to fight in both. Like that won't be true, but don't. Don't put me, for example, in the position of picking between two things I would definitely mm-hmm. plan on attending both of. Like, let me do that and then also do the other. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And in my opinion, like in the Iron Mountains, we had this feedback. What about a men's tournament? And my response to that is I get, like, at an initial level, why it sounds like a good idea. It sounds like you're doing two things to be fair Mm -hmm. but i really want to enter the open tournament yeah and i don't want i don't want all of the guys to be like okay we'll fight in the men's tournament Mm -hmm. wait now there's another one why we we just had our tournament yeah like because in practice the difference would be like two or three people based on my kingdom and the events i've been to and for me with that context i want I want to see an open tournament like we like we have where everyone gets to enter. I don't mm-hmm. want to take that away. Mm-hmm. And then additionally added to that, I think it can be great to have a non-men's event. Mm-hmm. As long as it's an additional thing, a second option, and as long as it's not like, hey, we are taking something away and replacing it. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, that makes perfect sense. I think it becomes the equality versus equity problem then. Like Ampgard, our all of our battle games are co-ed, and so I think that like ultimately we shouldn't remove these opportunities to have like open tournaments um, because that's just never been the spirit of our game. But we also shouldn't hinder the ability of women to participate, or I'm sorry, non-male um, people to participate in spaces exclusively made for them. Mm that makes yeah, sense I, yeah that makes a lot of sense i think as long as you're adding things like it, it's hard to go wrong when you're adding the cool things like, yeah. so uh back back to what i was um trying to ask what is it like participating in a non-male tournament especially from like an outsider perspective yeah. sell sell me on a non-male tournament you want me to or lightning either of you i i vote lightning yeah, I feel like I did this with you've, Seth. Real. You've done it once, right? <laughs> I've I've been in many. many oh, okay. Uh, non- I didn't. I've know. actually been in a couple with Lightning. I don't know if Lightning remembers me, um, but at one of the the 2017 Gathering of the Clans, uh, when we made Kingdom, I was in that one. Um, I did not get to be in the 2018 one because the Gathering of the Clans meeting was during the women's tourney, which was rude. And everybody that was not a man that was in that meeting felt like it was a very rude schedule. <laughs> um, 
and then I've done a couple at Winter's Edge, um, but uh, and then uh, at Keep, I got to enter that one in 2019 because uh, I finally healed up from your knee from my knee. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I'm glad you healed up, but I'm sorry you were hurt. Yep, at, at Gathering of the Clans. <laughs> okay, Lady Light. Like, <laughs> yes. Sell me on non-male tournaments. Tell me, like, paint me a word picture of what they're like. Yeah, okay. So, so the last one I... Um, we'll just cut where we lost. Are you back? I think I'm back. Okay. okay. Yes, we're back now. We'll just cut that m- minute. Okay, I'll, we're I'll off just. Air. Okay, I'll I'll start over. Sorry. So in 2019, yeah, no worries. 2019, <laughs> I was at Gathering of the Crowns, and the Valkyries were running this tournament. I don't know if you remember them, though, the ones in like the blue tunics with the really cool silver yeah, yeah, yeah. thing and sewed on the back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so so they were running it. And everyone, I, I think that was the largest number of women and non male people that I'd seen in one place at any time during the event. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I might be biased because I spent most of the event kind of on the ditch field, so <laughs> I didn't go to other parts of the event very much but that was the largest group that i'd seen together mm-hmm. so they all signed up and then they they gave us all name tags which is a thing i really enjoyed i don't i, I still managed to forget your name Kwan, but i did think you looked familiar when i saw you yeah so it's probably from there yeah or not that year, but the year that you were in it yeah so just just being able to learn the faces and maybe the names if you're better at names than I am. I'm not. <laughs> but they, they split us off into pools. I think this is the Hammer of God format. Mm-hmm. Anyway, to, to qualify, you had to fight everyone in like an eight-person group. Mm-hmm. So you got a lot of fights, even if you weren't very good. Mm-hmm. It's it's a much friendlier format than some of the others here. Like you, you wait an hour and then you fight and lose to somebody, and then you wait an hour. I mean, it's not mm-hmm. a, literally an hour, but right. Yeah. The, the, I love the small pools because they let us just fight a bunch of people without worrying so much about, oh, did I win this run time? Am yeah. I out now? Yeah. And it, it was just, it just felt chill and friendly. And it, it's not that it wasn't competitive. I mean, nobody was there to lose, right? You, mm-hmm. Nobody rocks up fight being like, you know, I don't really care. I, I, I'm not going to even try. So so we were like bringing our game, but it was it was cool. It was laid back. Yeah. It was at least as much about beating people as it was about winning. Yeah. And then, then we moved into the brackets and that was that was a little more intense and I, I did I think I squeaked through as a seed that year. Mm-hmm. So I got into the brackets and we did some fights and I ended up the oath place, I think. Yes. Nice. I think I've taken the oath place both of the years that I've tried entering. Yeah. So my, my future goal would be, I mean, I'd love to win that tournament. We'll, we'll see, but I'd like to place higher, ideally. But mm-hmm. uh, the, like, the, the one thing that was a little bit uncomfortable about that tournament was this, this didn't happen at the other tournaments that everybody else who was there at a round came to watch the brackets. And so there was just like this giant circle of people <laughs> all staring at the people in the middle, which were us doing our fights. Mm-hmm. And we, we had weaves. I think Anatole was weaving some of the bracketed fights. Mm-hmm. But we still had people in the circle who were trying to like make calls, which yeah. was uncomfortable and weird and not a thing I saw happening at any of the other tournaments. Mm-hmm. I mean, you just have to focus, right? You, I mean, it, it's a friendly place. Nobody's like, like the circle made it feel slightly less friendly, but still, like you just have to focus on what's in front of you. And mm-hmm. 
I, all the people, I don't have any complaints about the fights that I had. I thought everyone I got to fight was fine and it was fun. Mm -hmm. And like, I wish I'd placed a little higher, but it was just, just cool and fun. And I do tend to get a lot of anxiety about tournaments and I had some for that, but not as much as doing some of the larger open tournaments. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Um, you seem really passionate about fighting. I think I fought in two, two kingdom tournaments. Awesome. <laughs> I mean, great. I've been playing for two years and one of those years has been completely shut down. Um, so my experience of tournaments is extremely limited, but it's really cool to hear someone like passionate talk about them. Um <laughs> Because I angry talk about them. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's <laughs> passionate. <laughs> um, Wrathful. So yeah. I, I guess this is all just an elaborate way of saying, talk to me more about tournaments. <laughs> Tell me about this. Yeah, okay. I, I think I've entered every tournament I've had the chance to enter in my kingdom or at events. Mm -hmm. And... Like I said, if if it's depending how it's run, sometimes it's not all that fun to be there if you're not very good because then you fight. Like especially if they do seeded brackets, because if you if you're on the wrong end of the seeding, then you get stacked up against the best person they can find, and oh, yeah. then you just get. I I'm aware that there is a good reason for that. I've never actually run a tournament, so I'm not show exactly what the reason is. I know they're not just, like, out to get me and ruin my day, but... I mean, like, I think <laughs> the main reason is for, like, for, for reverse seating like that is, instead of random seating, which is what I normally did when I was champion, was to be like, hey, maybe this last person kind of got in on a fluke, or, like, something like that. And I feel like that's a lot of times the reason for reverse seating. Which I don't even know if that's the correct term for it, but I'm gonna call it that anyways. Um, but I I prefer random seating personally because it seems more fun and chaotic, and that's my kind of tournament. I I know the I know the gripe I've heard about random seating is like like if you have two really good strong fighters in the tournament and they're fighting each other in the first round, mm -hmm. you're going to be grumpy about it because they feel like they should be fighting over first and second place mm -hmm. instead of. Yep, but I, I've never dealt with that as a champion. I didn't put two triads <laughs> against each other. Nope, I didn't do that. Um, so, but that's the fun of the chaos. Because then I, the betting pool is all off. We don't I, I feel like, for me in tournaments, I kind of started out kind of caring. And then I did, I, I did well in actually the first non-mins tournament that Iron Mountains ran. Mm -hmm. I, I I run that tournament in 2016, I want to say, or maybe it was 2017. It was like nine or 10 people, a really fun day up at Duke Collins. And I really enjoyed that day, but performance kind of messed with my head. Like, like after I had done well on that day, then I started to feel bad kind of every time I went out and like, like I, like every time I lost a fight, I felt bad about it in a way that I hadn't before. Like I wasn't at the standard that I wanted to display. I felt like now I was just failing on behalf of all women, which is like a silly thing to say out loud. But like, no, we <laughs> I, were I that psychological <laughs> game got you. We were talking about this on I don't know if you saw our podcast for Black History Month, um, but we were talking about this like. As um, a member of a minority group, whether it's um, a, a racial group or a gender group or whatever, um, a lot of times you feel pressure to be like that model minority um, where you feel like you're representing your entire gender or race or whatever um, to others. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of pressure. Uh yeah, I let it get to me. I'm not going to lie. Like, I let it... I, I started having really bad anxiety in tournaments after that because, like, I, I wasn't... 
I haven't run since then. I've come, I've come close. I've got some second places in like Dutchy mm -hmm. tournaments, but like I, I got into, I went to a Pulk level tournament shortly after that, and I just got my first fight, and I just started shaking. Like mm. I, I, I can't remember if I won or lost, but I, I was not having a good time that day. I ended up being so nervous that I actually went and threw up. And I'm very proud that I still, compl I went through all the categories. I didn't go scratch myself out of the list. Mm -hmm. I showed up and I finished all of the fights. I think I might have run two individual fights, maybe mm -hmm. that whole day. But like, I, I didn't want to leave because if, if you let that happen and then you leave, I might have left and never gone back, yeah. right? So... I finished that and that was kind of a wake up call, but man, I, I kind of have a bad attitude now. I mm. need to work on this. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of went back to to be learning how to focus, just be learning how to make it just me, just the person I'm fighting, just having fun on the field. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if, if I'm not having fun, I'll go give myself a timeout, like go sit in the shade for 10 minutes, eat a snack, mm -hmm. drink some water, jump back in. Yeah. And just be learning how to tune out all this stuff in my head about I'm going to fail, I'm going to let a bunch of people down, I'm going to be a bad representation, I'm I'm going to prove I don't deserve the awards I have, which is not very many awards. I have the elders of the value. <laughs> Probably nobody other than me is worried about if I deserve them. Do you feel like it gave you like a little bit of an imposter syndrome? Probably a lot of an imposter. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this sounds exactly like this thing I know. <laughs> um, four Orders so, of the Warrior is really impressive. Um, I know Cabbage, my fiance, is one, a man, and two, been in the game 15 years, and he's also on four warriors. So, I know kingdoms sometimes give them differently. Does Winter's Edge expect you to get streaks to get an Odo? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We technically have battlefield prowess, but I don't think I've ever seen anybody get a warrior for battlefield prowess. I have prowess. one warrior, and it's from battlefield prowess. Well, I now know somebody in Winter's Edge <laughs> that has a warrior for battlefield I, prowess. I, I think all of mine, like on the back, if you look, I think they all say battlefield prowess, mm. but I got the third after I won the Iron Mountains non-men's tournament, that I got the fifth after placing at the gathering of the crowns mm -hmm. and they still were like they said battlefield prowess but it was like right after those events and i'm pretty sure somebody recommended me based on those performance mm -hmm. so that's I mean, good if, if you <laughs> yeah i just remembered that the reason that i got my second order of the warrior is that i technically came in like fourth in a kingdom tourney but it was a quals tourney so there were like 10 people there and the only That's reason so cool. that i came in as high as i did is because there were like 10 people there but also i did really well in pole because i love pole and oh, nice and i like to kick ass in pole it is probably my favorite thing yeah um, i was sad in the last tournament when you took up pole to the throat and i didn't get to see you fight more oh yeah yeah it was sad times yeah i forgot about that my bad <laughs> me me going pole great me up against pole not so great <laughs> i got a pole just before we get into lockdown so i don't i don't know if that i'm doing with it like at all but <laughs> yeah what I've heard with pole is that if you're going to play it, just get used to hurting people. <laughs> that, that sounds bad. <laughs> that sounds really bad. I don't even think like that. <laughs> was that from Rabbit? No. <laughs> no, it wasn't from Rabbit, actually. Uh -huh. I'm surprised. Who... Say the name. Say the name. No, Eric. no. Eric, Eric tell me. <laughs> Reveal it. There's no secret. I'm not here to slander anyone. Ah, <laughs> cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you've been called out on air. Um, that that was my DJ voice. Did it sound good? Yeah, it sounded great. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Now I'm I'm just tired. I did my taxes today, guys, and it it was bad. We're not here to talk about taxes. Uh, yeah. taxes we're here to talk about Amgard. <laughs> Amgard. 
So I did the kingdom taxes. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but have you done the kingdom taxes? No, uh, no that's the BOD job now. Ooh, finally. Heh <laughs> 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 BOD. Anyway. Um, how long have you been in the game, Lightning? I don't know if we asked that question. Um, Just about five years. Well, six. But time is fake. I've been in the game since 2015. Okay. Yep, that's that's. Pandemic time. year doesn't count. Yep. It's like... It's a we're, myth. We're all subtracting one year from our <laughs> Amcar <laughs> histories. <laughs> 2021, 2022, Electric Boogaloo. I know that Cabbage and I got vaccinated, and so we were, we went out to field um, down where we're able to have Amcar because there's no uh, restrictions on gatherings in those places. Because the South is bad. Yeah, but we were vaccinated, and so <laughs> um, I ran for the first time in like eight months. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was winded. <laughs> how's, that, how's that going for you? I how, how many cigarettes you been smoking? <laughs> I <laughs> I'm uh, sorry, I'm being mean. Tonight. I I haven't smoked a cigarette today. How about that? Oh, I'm very proud, actually. I'm sorry, we've totally <laughs> taken over lightning. <laughs> no voice. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I started around the same time as you. I technically started fall 2014, but my records were lost. So technically I started spring 2015. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. Um, so we're the same age, lightning. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> same amp guard age. Amp guard birthdays. Um, but no, that's that's really cool that you've been in for that amount of time and are so widely involved in amp guard at large um what made you want to get involved with the big picture of amp guard or were you just kind of voluntold into this position where you're doing all these statistics oh uh, um Putting yeah so <laughs> <laughs> i mean at, at first i i mean i think most new players just like hang out at their home parks and to them, the game is the group of people that meets in a city on a weekend day, mm -hmm. and that's all there is. And to be honest, those days I kind of want to go back to that. <laughs> but for me, that change was you know, people, someone added me, or I, I looked and I found some of the larger online groups mm -hmm. and was like, oh, cool, there was, there was mail out there, there was there were discussions happening about this game and I mean I, I really like fighting and I, I have since I got started in the game and I wanted to reach out and find out because there weren't a lot of women just in my area it was mostly guys and I wanted to reach out and find out who I could connect with to find out about other women players who were and non-male players although at that time I wasn't aware of that terminology Mm -hmm. just wanted to meet up with folks mm -hmm. who were similar to me and interested in the same things. Mm -hmm. So I asked a question, hey, how many how many steward knights are women in the game? And then I got a series of very, not only very depressing answers, but very, like, abrasive in a way I didn't expect. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, this was very clearly a long-standing argument with you accidentally opened some wounds didn't you <laughs> yeah yes <laughs> i accidentally set some people off and then shortly after that there was do you know what knights ama is I... knights ama is like a facebook group that amy salvador admiral set up so mm -hmm. anyone from across the game can ask knights for their opinion i think we talked about it that with her last week oh yeah we did yeah. i should remember that yeah. i believe in you vidalia <laughs> so so that group that group I, was a thing i found out existed and then i found out that someone don't remember who someone wanted to do a discussion on that group about women and fighting in amp code and a post was made on the house lioness page to be like hey we'll make i'm going to try to organize this discussion and that post got a ton of pushback that surprised me along the lines of, Val, this is, we've had this problem for 20 years. Thank goodness you're here to save everybody. <laughs> and, that's, and I saw that comment and I thought it was just some troll. 
but when I pushed back on it, a bunch of people came to tell me to take a step back. Mm. And that, that experience was strange and stressful. Mm -hmm. And it made me want to do something. I, they, they ended up going ahead with like the Q&A to the Knights and various different things were said about it. But I wasn't satisfied because it felt like people were going in circles and mm -hmm. And it was just entrenched in this whole bell. Women just need to try how to. Yeah. Well, we need to make Aunt Gold more welcoming, but nobody can agree on how. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe it's not so bad. Maybe maybe this is just to be expected because there aren't women in the game anyway. And like it just felt awful. It felt awful enough that I wanted to do something. And I found out that we had the ilk, the online record keeper. Mm -hmm. but it seemed like nobody was using the information that was available. So mm -hmm. I went through some like different iterations, different attempts to dig into this data to see, okay, well, but what are we actually looking at here? But, but it that does seem to be happening rather than just rather than just everyone's personal individual take, because I wanted to see if there was a way to to kind of at least get us all talking about the same set of facts. Mm -hmm. So that's when I did the research project that was separate, separating out elders of the burial by gender. Here I found out that only 1% of us make it to sixth elder. Mm -hmm. I found out that basically everyone who wins tournaments is a guy. There are some exceptions. There have been occasional isolated examples mm -hmm. where we have a winner of a tournament who's not a guy. I'm not going to erase that and say it never happens. It's just quite rare. Mm -hmm. It's 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 rare enough that in the big picture, most of us get to sixth field and that's the ceiling. Mm -hmm. And it's not like nobody had ever brought that up before. It's not like it's not like any of the points I made were new. It's just that now there's hard facts. There was like, there's hard facts. It's it's pretty it's hard to it's pretty easy to dismiss one person who's especially if she's not very good at fighting and she just says man i'm i'm having a hard time and i feel like something's wrong about this mm -hmm. like that can be dismissed pretty easily with oh well sounds like you just need to work harder mm -hmm. okay you can't dismiss people still do but there, much fewer people will try to dismiss 20 years of data going through every player in the game who has a record in the ilk and dismiss that with, okay, well, clearly guys just work harder. Hmm. That, that's still a take that I hear from time to time. But now when that's said, it, it's said against a background of actually having this graphic and having these facts. Does that make sense? Yes. Sorry, I just kind of vomited for a while. No, that was perfect. <laughs> it was amazing. I, I love every word that just came out of your mouth. It's been, ah. Uh, that was like a beautiful story of like inspiration, like tragedy, inspiration, winning, data. Like it was like an an epic of data. Well, I'm uh, glad that novella. you. I'm glad that you put in the footwork uh, to speak up for us. So thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I, I think it made some difference. Mm -hmm. I guess the last quote as, as to how I got on to the award committee, someone said they thought it might be a good fit for me. And so I applied and then I ended up getting a position there. And I think the reason they thought it would be a fit is that I'd already been talking about awards and award structures. And yeah. it, I'm really happy to have that opportunity. I'm excited to see what we collectively do with it. And we'll see what the monarchs ultimately decide. But so I, I know you've looked into um, award data for uh, non-men or women in um, Warriors. Have you done any digging around in other um, night paths or ladder awards? Um, not, not the same level of detail. I know, I, I know it's definitely different for those paths because I can think of multiple uh, um, female and non-male knights mm -hmm. in all of those and 
I know, I know we've had. I, I, maybe champion is the most might be the most underrepresented position. I'm I don't actually know if that's true. Don't hit me. <laughs> Quan was champion of our kingdom. That's why I was hey, nudging him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're on the list. <laughs> I, I'm on the list on the Amped Wiki page for the first. I think the list is technically first female positions, but that does not really. Involve you're non male, but I'm not a man. It's adjacent. <laughs> I am female adjacent um, by my own volition. Um, <laughs> that was ridiculous. Um, so there, there's a list on the Amped Wiki uh, for people that have been like the firsts in their kingdoms. And since we only made kingdom in 2017 and I was the first champion, uh, elected champion, um, then I was obviously the first non-male champion of the kingdom. Like, I didn't let anybody else beat me out for that. That was mine. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. So, and then what, then probably a year later, uh, Queen Jade would have been our first female queen, obviously, a uh, monarch. Uh, I guess technically I would have been the first non-male PM as well for the kingdom. And then, I guess, Lady Jade would also be the first non-male regent. What about uh, Persephone? You're right, never mind. Oh my god, my brain. Ruke, sorry. Ruke, yes. Ruke is the first non-male regent. So we did it. We did it all within the first two years. (laughs) Except for GMR. I still don't think we've had a non-male GMR. I guess that's next on my list then. Gotta, gotta knock now. them all out. <laughs> gotta knock them all out. Gotta be, gotta be more names on that list. Um, that was a tangent. Uh, but yeah, champion. Uh, have you held any uh, leadership positions locally or at Kingdom or anything like that? Um, I have been, I've been in local office. I'm, I'm currently acting local GMO you we're having some trouble getting officers at the moment because everyone is it's it's hard to do things over the internet so Mm -hmm. reaching out from kingdom level and i was also gmo then sometime last year i i didn't to be honest i didn't do a whole lot Mm -hmm. i mean i i helped out the other officers sometimes but yeah I really appreciate people who are in office. I just don't really want to be in office. <laughs> and that is a valid choice. Yeah, that's a it's valid. <laughs> Why do we do this to ourselves, Fidelia? Again, masochists. Ah. Uh. <laughs> All right. So normally we wrap up with something like your favorite or silliest, funniest amped guard story. Uh, do you have anything in mind? Hmm. I don't know. I I just miss it all so much. <laughs> <laughs> I know you wanted a favorite story, but yeah. Like, have you guys ever been to Rackus? Do you know what that is? I have not. I that's in Colorado, right? Yes, Rackus is the Iron Mountains annual event. I I don't know if it's happening this year. It's up in the air, but mm-hmm. um. Just, just every year, it's such a great time. The, f- the first time I went to Rackus, it was at Bios. I don't think we're going back to that site because it was really dusty and there were a lot of mosquitoes. Mm-hmm. But it was still, it was the first time I'd been to an event. So mm-hmm. it was just like camping out and spending several days with everybody in Gaub. And mm-hmm. it was just, a, it was a really cool experience. There was, the two things that really stick out were the Baudic that we did mm-hmm. that night. I hadn't done that before, and just everyone sitting around a campfire mm-hmm. and taking turns singing or singing together. And th- those performances were just so much fun. Mm-hmm. It's it's not like it's not like we were professionals or anything, but just having everyone there together and just sitting around and enjoying music. Mm-hmm. There's like this kindred spirit with bardics. Um, mm-hmm. I, yeah, s- I say like, assertively, having never been to one in person, but <laughs> it's okay. You know, I, I probably knew one person there, maybe, but mm-hmm. but it was like we were all just 
it is like we were all friends who just hadn't met yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that that event also had my first time being at being on a like a battlefield that was more than just ten people or so on a side. Instead, it was like thirty or fifty people on a side, and we were we were in this like horse corral thing, like a riding arena with floodlights. Mm -hmm. It was at night, which is why we were there. Also, I was the one who'd gone through the previous day and raked it all clean and cleaned <laughs> up all the bits and pieces from having horses in there. <laughs> what a great time at your first event. <laughs> <laughs> it was fine. I volunteered to help with site prep, but mm. like the, the fighting was awesome. And I got a bit overwhelmed at one point, just all the light and the sound and so many more people than I thought were mm -hmm. going to be new. But, man, that was so much fun. I, I want to do it again, like, as soon as things open back up. Yeah, I can't definitely... wait to have more events. Oh, yeah. I also can't wait for more events. Uh... I feel like, like, especially because, you know, I'm new, um, and walking around your first event, you're just like, ooh, what's that? And then, There's ooh, really what's something that? magical about your very first event. Like, there, it's, yeah, there is. It's just like so many things to discover, and they're all really <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, because like you get to meet all these other people, but then you also have like a couple of people that you see every week and you're like, hey, how's it going? And they're out there in a tent drinking a beer and you're like, this is weird, but awesome. <laughs> I don't normally <laughs> see you like this. Like normally you're just wailing on me or something or where you see each other for like three hours and then I don't see you for another week. It's crazy. You said a phrase that I really like, which is friends that just haven't met yet. <laughs> That's how yeah. a lot of events feel like. Mm -hmm. Everyone is the same kind of weird and <laughs> yeah. Though there are some that are a little bit of a different kind of weird. Well, you know, mm. let's be honest. I mean, there were some, that event was also a kind of rough first introduction, but I know, I know <laughs> at the end, so do you want me to spoil the mood with something else that happened? Yes. We can, yeah. Please spoil the mood. <laughs> so I was doing something or other and kind of walking around the site it was like eight in the evening mm -hmm. and then like a big group of people all went walking off of the ditch field looking like something had happened mm -hmm. so i started asking hey is, is everything okay did did something happen and they were like yeah so and so just blah 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 like i heard five different stories from five different people <laughs> but some of we had got hurt was the upshot like mm -hmm. someone had got hurt mm -hmm. and like so, so there was a nose on site not, like not officially but someone who was on site was also a nose mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think that she came and helped out and i went not the smartest thing i ever did i went to the ditch field to see what was up and see if things were okay mm -hmm. and the guy who had hurt the other player was still out there and I went on the field to see how things were, and everyone else on my side of the ditch line was like, like you know, you know, you're supposed to be like lined up in a line, facing other people lined up in a line. Mm -hmm. That totally works. Okay, so we lined up, and then people on this side of me went this way, people on the other side went the other way, and <laughs> I got to fight the guy who had just oh I'd no, killed someone oh no, all by myself. And it was fine because, like, at that point, he had significantly dialed it back and was being careful. He did get tossed off site because uh. it, it, he eventually got tossed off site, but mm -hmm. I, I got to fight him by myself through several rounds <laughs> because no one else who was there wanted to. And uh. I, just, I, called him, I just called everything that happened really loudly so there could be no mistake about what I was and wasn't taking and mm -hmm. at that time I felt pretty okay with it I wouldn't have done it if I'd felt unsafe but like looking back on it that's probably not the best series of decisions <laughs> I've ever made and it's just totally like a heads up that ha huh, sometimes this can kind of go bad because yeah. Someone, yeah. someone else was thrown off the event and 
thrown into a whole thing. And did he get thrown out? Did he get thrown out for using like excessive force in fighting or whatever, or being rowdy, or I don't know what happened, but like, did he get I mean, kicked out because of what happened on the ditch field? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, that is. Hmm. And I believe. And I don't remember the details. I know for sure that that was the main reason that he he was yeah. asked to leave. But he might still be banned on the Iron Mountains. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. I would have to look. I, I know. I know the monarch handed something down for both people involved, and then was like, "Well, maybe not the guy who got hurt." And then mm-hmm. it, it's been a few years, so I don't. Yeah. Don't quote me on every detail, but like that was also a thing that happened at my very first event. And I don't, I don't know about you, Vi- Vidalia, but the the only thing that was playing in my mind when you're like one side went that way and one side went the other way was like that scene in Mulan where they all just step back and leave her alone at the front of the line <laughs> to get beaten uh-huh. up. <laughs> I was like, gosh, that's that's an animated comedy thing. Like they really left you out there. I mean, what are you going to do? Lock away from that? Right? <laughs> I mean, apparently everyone else does, but like... This is a challenge now. <laughs> <laughs> well, fantastic. Um, Thanks for coming on. I really appreciate all of uh, your research and data analysis that you've done for uh, the Circle of Monarchs. Um talking to you was really great and really informative and really enlightening yes. um you were a wonderful guest and thank you so much for coming on i feel like you wrote two epics for us one about <laughs> tournaments for vidalia and one about data for myself uh, <laughs> thank you very much oh, you're welcome I'm, I'm happy to have been here this was fun yeah Hey everyone, thanks for listening. If you liked what you heard, be sure to subscribe to our podcast on YouTube or Spotify to get notified about new episodes. And make sure to follow us on Facebook for announcements and more.